two important concepts in economics is consumer surplus and producer surplus. Of one of the things that economists are interested in figuring out is who benefits from various policies. There are two concepts that can help us figure this out, consumer surplus and producer surplus. In this video, we'll look at consumer surplus, and in another video, we'll look at the producer surplus. The consumer surplus is the difference between what a consumer pays for a good and what the, the consumer would have paid for a good. The consumer surplus is the additional benefit that the consumer gets for free. Here's a simplified version of the idea of consumer surplus. Joe wants a big screen TV to, in his basement to watch football. He's willing to spend $950 for the TV set. However, a local electronics store has a TV for $500. What is Joe's consumer surplus? In this simplified version, the consumer surplus is the difference between what Joe paid and what Joe would have paid. Since Joe was willing to pay $950 for the TV, and he actually only paid $500, the difference between the two is $450. That is $950 subtract $500. As we will see in a minute, Joe doesn't get the $450 of extra benefit. Let's look at the situation on a graph. Before starting on the economics of the graph, let's take a minute to review the graph. The horizontal axis represents the quantity of good, and the quantity of the good increases as one moves from left to right. The vertical axis represents the price, and as one moves from the top to the bottom, the price increases. Notice that the demand curve is downward sloping and unlike the previous demand curves you encountered, this one crosses the price axis at $1,000. The $1,000 is the maximum that anybody would pay for the TV set. Finally, let's add in what the electronic store is actually selling the TV for. In this case, Joe paid $500 for the TV set. As you may remember from the scenario, Joe pay, was willing to pay $950 for one TV. Also notice he was only going to purchase one TV. So we're going to put the $950 on the graph indicating what Joe was willing to pay. Notice this creates a rectangle. The rectangle is Joe's consumer surplus. How much does Joe get as a result of his consumer surplus. As you may remember, the consumer surplus is the difference between the price Joe pay, was willing to pay and the amount he actually paid. Since Joe purchased one HD TV, the quantity will not impact the value of the consumer surplus for Joe. Since he was willing to spend 950 but only paid 500, his consumer surplus is 950. Let's look at another consumer. Sally was willing to pay $750 for the HDTV, but she actually only paid $500. So Sally's consumer surplus is the difference between what she paid, $500, and what she would have paid, $750 or $250. Judy wants to buy an HDTV also. She's willing to pay $700 for the TV, but only pays $500. Since Judy was willing to pay $700, but only paid $500, her consumer surplus is the difference between $700 and $500, or $200. Steve wants to buy an HDTV also. 
he's willing to pay $675 for the TV, but only pays $500. Since Steve was willing to pay $675 but only pays $500, so his consumer surplus is the difference between $675 and $500 or $175. The total consumer surplus for all the consumers is the sum of the individual's consumer surpluses. In our example, the total amount of the consumer surplus is the sum of Joe's consumer surplus. 450, Sally's consumer surplus 250, Judy's consumer surplus $200, Steve's consumer surplus 175, or a total of $1,075. Typically, economists think about consumer surplus in terms of the entire market for the good. This means that they are less interested in the amount of consumer surplus Joe or Sally receives, but what consumers receive in general. The consumer surplus for the entire market is the area underneath the demand curve above the equilibrium point. In the example, the consumer surplus is the region bounded by the $1,000 mark, the $500 mark, which is the market price, and the quantity of TVs sold. Of course, an economist would like to think about consumer surplus in more general terms. So the consumer surplus is the consumer surplus is the region bounded by the maximum price, the equilibrium price, and the equilibrium quantity. How might we calculate the dollar value of the consumer surplus? Let's go back to the first example, the consumer surplus with a the maximum number of individual that will pay is $1,000, an equilibrium price of $500 and 5 units. The most important thing to observe is the area bounded by the maximum price, the equilibrium price, and the equilibrium quantity is really a triangle. So by calculating the area of a triangle, the consumer surplus for the entire market can be found. The area of a triangle is the base of the triangle, often abbreviated B, times the height, abbreviated H, times 0.5 or 1 half. The base of the triangle is the distance from the price axis to the equilibrium quantity. The height of a triangle is the distance from the equilibrium price to the maximum price. In our example, the base has a value of 5, so 5 can be entered into the formula. Next we need to substitute in the height. The height is the difference between the maximum price, 1000, and the equilibrium price, $500 or has a value of $500. So $500 is substituted into the formula. Next, multiply 5 times 500. Which gives 2,500 and multiply the 2,500 by 0.5 or 1 half. So the entire surplus, entire consumer surplus has a value of $1,250. Let's compare our result to our earlier calculation of the consumer surplus for the four consumers. As you may remember, the sum of Joe's consumer surplus, Sally's consumer surplus, Judy's consumer consumer surplus, Steve's consumer surplus add up to $1,075, which is not too much different from $1,000. $250. Indeed, if one takes into consider the areas shaded in red, it is apparent that the difference between the two outcomes is largely due to the way the surpluses were calculated.